please don't be ugly. Please don't be ugly. Please don't be ugly. Ah! Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and in today's video, I am going to be cleaning out my scrap bin and figuring out something to do with some of it. My scrap bin is overfilled and it's just stressing me out looking at it because I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. So I promised myself that I would clean it out and figure out a little project for it before I can work on anything new. If you're in the same position as me, I hope that this inspires you to do something with your scraps and let's get started! I organized my scraps into different piles based on the color and put all of the super tiny scraps in their own pile to recycle or use that stuffing for Pikachu. Some of the big pieces aren't even scraps, they've just been forgotten and I gotta store them away. And a lot of these materials can definitely be donated if I have no more use for them. One day later. All right, so I organized all my scraps into different piled colors and I put um, what I wasn't inspired by into tubs for now and also uh, separated the really small scrap pieces to donate and uh, I was inspired by the yellows and the red and the black and my idea is to turn this mess right here into a Pikachu themed item. I don't know if it's gonna be a pillow, plushie, uh, bag or coin purse or something like that but my plan right now is to piece together all of the yellow scraps into a big piece of fabric and then I'll have, you know, more room to cut out my pattern pieces and see what I really have to work with. For the rest of my scraps, stay tuned to the end to see how I'm going to deal with them and let's get started! First, I cleaned up the scraps by cutting away any long skinny ends and I noticed I had a lot of this yellow rib knit from when I was making Luffy bucket hats to sell. So I'm gonna use those first so my Pikachu is all the same fabric. I decided to form two circles with my scraps, making sure to overlap the edges enough so everything will be attached when sewn. I've been seeing on TikTok people sandwiching their scraps in between water soluble stabilizer to hold everything in place, so I'm gonna try that out. Make sure to place a stabilizer underneath first so you don't have to move your design afterwards like me and then pin around the scraps to hold it together for sewing. The pieces stayed in place really well while sewing and I'm not even using a walking foot. I'm just following one scrap piece at a time and just randomly moving from one area to the next. No rhyme or reason, just making sure I catch them all. Once you're done sewing, you can wash the stabilizer away in the sink under some warm water or throw it into the washing machine because sometimes this stuff can take some time to wash off. After it dried, I noticed that on the first circle I sewed, I completely missed some areas because the scraps weren't overlapped enough. So make sure to really overlap your pieces to prevent this from happening. My scraps actually warped back into their own direction. So I just patched it up with more pieces of scraps. All right, moving on to the ears. I looked for some bigger scrap pieces to cut out the ears, but since there wasn't enough, I had to piece together more scraps, but this time I thought I could just skip the stabilizer and save some time washing it by sewing it one piece at a time. It seemed like a good idea, right? But when I was done, the fabric was super warped in all sorts of directions, so then I had to seam rip and readjust it back and forth so that it can lay flat. It doesn't look as bad here anymore, but you can still see what I'm talking about. I think it would have been better if I pinned all the pieces together first to make sure it was laying flat because the machine does stretch out the knit when you're not using stabilizer. And I didn't have this issue when I used the stabilizer, so moral of the story is just use stabilizer. Okay, moving on. I cut four pieces for Pikachu's ears and then with the head and ears laid out, I was like, hmm, I could do more. I can make Pikachu bigger than just a head. So I had this great idea to overlap the circle pieces to create Pikachu's whole body. And then I cut a second layer of his body from the rest of the scraps. 
I decided to reshape the body so it's smaller on top and then I went and attached the first two circle pieces together along the curve which kind of looks like it could be Pikachu's butt. Pikachu also needs a tail in the back and I had the perfect leftover scrap to make it. I marked out the shape of his tail and added a little more fabric to it. Then I added seam allowance along all the sides and cut out a second layer of the tail from a different yellow scrap fabric because I was done piecing together more scraps. For the brown stripes on the back and on the tail, I didn't have any brown fabric to use so I dyed some of my white scraps brown. Once the brown fabric was washed and dried, I marked out Pikachu's stripes and cut them out. For the yellow tail, I thought I would cut the bottom of it off and replace it with the brown fabric. But then I was like, wait, I shouldn't have done that because the tail needs some stability. So I ended up piecing the yellow fabric back on and we'll just be sewing the brown fabric on top. Using some black scrap swim fabric, I cut out the tips of Pikachu's ears and will be top stitching them to the top of the ears. For the face, I used the same black scrap fabric for the eyes, nose, and mouth, red scraps for the cheeks, and white scraps for the pupils. All of these scraps are knit fabric. The body wouldn't be complete without arms and legs, so I made some basic little ones and sewed them together along the U-shape, leaving the top open for stuffing. Now I can sew all the small features on, and a useful tip is to tape everything down with magic tape, and make sure to cover all the edges too for the best results. The tape helps stabilize and allows you to smoothly sew over all the small pieces. When you're done, just peel the tape off. Another tip is to sew a tight zigzag stitch over the edges in matching thread for a super clean look. Sew the brown spots on the tail and stripes on the back. To give the tail some body, I thought I would cut some thick interfacing and add it to each layer. This is optional and definitely made my life more difficult when sewing the tail right sides together because it was so thick and the shape of the tail is a zigzag so it was, yeah, it was a nightmare. What I did was face the tail right sides together and then I left the top of the tail open to turn it inside out and sewed along the two zigzag sides. I had to seam rip the bottom and side of the tail a little more so that I can turn it inside out. Then I just folded the openings inside and top stitched it closed. I recommend using a lighter interfacing or maybe choosing a different technique to sew the tail. To attach the tail to the body, I cut a small slit in the back to insert it and then sewed it right sides together from underneath. I want the ears to be stuffed with the body instead of stuffed separately and then attached afterwards, if that makes sense. So I marked the placement on top of the head and then sewed only the top of the ears first to make sure that the black tips matched up first. Now I can face the front ears right sides together to the front body and the back side of the ears right sides together to the back body and sew each ear down individually to the head. Before I can add the arms and legs, I stuff them with some scraps and then pin them right sides together to the body so they're tucked inside. Sew around the entire thing but leave an opening at the bottom to turn it inside out.
Before turning it inside out, make sure to clip the corners around the ears. It's looking so cute and I'm happy with everything so far. With the rest of my yellow scraps, I cut them up even more for stuffing. And this looks like a lot, but it was only enough for the ears and top of the head. So I have a lot more to cut. I wish I had a machine to actually shred fabric like a paper shredder, but I don't think those exist for personal use. So just be careful using that rotary cutter. It looks scary because I'm going in fast forward, but no hands were harmed in making this. By the way, do you see how clean my table got? I pretty much used all my yellow scraps as stuffing before switching to my muslin scraps. Once Pikachu is super stuffed, I hand sewed the opening closed and to keep the tail up, I hot glued it down. Here's the final reveal. Pikachu, I choose you. You guys, I had such a great feeling about this Pikachu while I was making it. Everything looked like it was going to be fine. But after I stuffed it up, I don't know what happened. Like, why is it so slanted? I think that when I was sewing the body pieces um, right sides together, the front side may have been slanted more. But I also feel like... Because I pieced together so many scra um, stretchy yellow fabric in all sorts of direction that the grain line is very off and after I um, stuffed it, it kind of just stretched in its own way. But it's still kind of cute though, right? And if you don't like the front, you can turn it to the back side because it looks way better. This plushie took me so long to make that I don't even want to think about what I'm going to do with the rest of the scraps. So I'm going to be recycling as much as I can with four days. I found out about them through Instagram. They have like this take back bag where you can fill it up with scraps and old clothes so that they can recycle it. The only thing that sucks is I get to pay $20 for the bag, but at least I can have a peace of mind now and know that my scraps aren't going to end up in the landfill. And best of all, I get to start new projects. I do want to say that I'm going to be starting a new habit with my scraps. So instead of just tossing them into my bin in hopes of using it in the future, when I start a new project and have the scraps left over, I'm going to figure out something to do with them in that moment. I hope you enjoyed this video and I want to know what you do with your scraps down in the comments or if you're like me and just continue to hoard them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!